Hello everyone, I am our Studio Helper, and today we will be doing a tutorial on making scatter plots in R. This tutorial is aimed at beginners, so we will be going over the basics and covering geom functions, changing themes, labels, and legends. This tutorial is being completed on February 6th, 2023, on R version 4.2.0. So let's get started. The absolute first thing that I need to do is point you toward the best resources available. RStudio provides a comprehensive cheat sheet for ggplot2 that lays out a template to make any kind of graph. I will be referring back to this template throughout the video, and I've included a link to it in the description below. So if you've never done this before, the first thing you will need to do is install the appropriate packages. This can be done using the install packages function and then typing the name of the package that you would like to install. The ggplot2 is the topic of this video today, but it is included in the tidyverse package. Tidyverse also includes a compilation of many other packages that are very useful for data analysis and manipulation, and I would recommend that many users would probably benefit from using the whole suite of tidyverse packages as well. Loading tidyverse loads ggplot2 as well, so there's no need to do this twice. Further documentation on tidyverse is available at the link in the description below. We can run the data function in order to pull up a list of all the data sets that are available to work with for us in R. These are can change depending on the packages that you have loaded. You can see here that we have the ggplot2 data sets available here. In our tutorial today, we will be using the empty cars data set. This data set is a list of 32 different cars where they measure 11 different variables. Further documentation on this data set is also included at a link in the description below. Now we are ready to start creating our ggplot. So I'll go back to the cheat sheet and we are going to start with the basics. Every single graph will start with a line something like this. ggplot data equals data mapping equals AES mappings where data will be replaced by our data set and mappings are where you assign the variables to their different parameters. So here I'll go ggplot data equals empty cars mapping equals AES x equals and we are going to select horsepower as our independent variable and y equals miles per gallon. I believe that in this scenario, miles per gallon will depend on horsepower. So that is why I selected horsepower as the x variable. So this is the basic template for our ggplot. However, we still do not have enough to create a graph. First, we will need to select a, diff a geom function to represent our graph. The geom functions are organized by the type of data that they are best suited for. In our scenario, we are looking at two variables that are both continuous. And we would like to create a scatter plot. So looking under this section, we can see that the geom point function is the appropriate function to create a scatter plot for our data. We can do that simply by typing geom point and running the function to create our first scatter plot. As you can see, the scatter plot is still very basic and we can add a lot more information using ggplot2. First, going back to the cheat sheet, you can see that there are many different variables and parameters that we can change within the geom point function itself. In this example, I'll be looking at alpha, color, and size. These variables can be set to constants, other variables, or other relevant information if that applies to your situation. So in this scenario, I'm going to set alpha equal to a constant. Alpha affects the transparency of the points. We are going to set the color to cylinders, which is another variable in the data, the number of cylinders in the engine. And we are going to set size to equal, to be relative to the weight of the car. So now if we run that, you can see that we get a graph with much more information than we had before. However, you may notice 
that cylinders and weight are both being treated as continuous variables. However, cylinders isn't really continuous because there's never going to be cars with five cylinders and there's never going to be cars with seven cylinders. So this should really probably be a categorical variable instead. So to change it from a numerical or continuous variable into a categorical variable, we are going to change it to a factor. And now you can see that the cars are organized by the number of cylinders they have into groups as opposed to being measured on a continuous scale. And this is much better for this application in my opinion. So we will continue to refry in our graph by adding more layers. And the next layer that we want to add is a line of best fit. We will go back to the cheat sheet, back to our two variables, both continuous section, to look for the appropriate function. Here we will see that the geome smooth function will be best for this scenario. There are different methods that can be chosen. Two common ones are LM for a linear model or LOS for a local regression model. We will test both in this and see which one fits the data better. So you'll start with geome smooth and then method equals LM. And you can see that that fit a linear model. It does see to seem to fit okay. However, the data does appear to have some sort of curve to it. So I have a feeling the lowest model might fit a little better. You can see here that the local regression model does appear to fit the data a bit better in general. However, you can see that the line is tailing up a bit at the end here, which is not expected and probably an example of overfitting, which does need to be considered. However, we're not going to worry about that today. Instead, we are going to move on to adjusting the theme of the graph. So back to the cheat sheet, we can scroll down to the theme section and you can see these are the different themes that are available to you in black in, in, in uh, our studio. Personally, my favorite is the gray theme, which is the default one. But uh, for, sake, for demonstration's sake, I will change it to the light theme today. So we will go theme light. And you can see the changes that makes. This is also a nice theme. And finally, we need to change the labels, add a title, axis labels, and these legend labels um, to something that's more appropriate. So we're going to go here, and we're going to go to the cheat sheet. And here's the labels and legend section. So the first thing we want to do is add labels and change our title, create a title. So we will go labs title equals horsepower versus miles per gallon x so this is going to be our x label we're going to go horsepower and our y label is going to be miles per gallon see that looks nice and pretty and now we will continue to work on the legends so back to the cheat sheet this guides function will allow us to control if the legend is visible or not and you can see that this alpha legend is really not necessary at all it's not giving us any useful information so the first thing we're going to do is get rid of that alpha equals none and we run that and you can see that that removed that 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 alpha legend there so we continue to work on the legends and in order to do that we will use the scale fill discrete but it's not always fill it's whatever um, parameter you used in your AES mappings so going back to R we can see that we used color and size. So here we're gonna go scale color. And you remember that color is a factor, so it is this discrete variable, scale color discrete. And then we will go name. This will set the title of the, um, of the legend and we're gonna title it 
number of cylinders. And then we are going to set the labels by creating a vector of the new label names. So we're going to do four sil, six sil, and eight sil. And if we run that, oops, you can see that now we can actually adjust the legend parameters as well. So we are going to do that for the other legend as well. So this one is going to be scale size and it's actually continuous. So we need to make it continuous. Name will be weight. Oops, this needs to be in uh, quotations and labels. Now it's important to note the number of labels needs to match with the number of elements in the legend. So in this case we will have to continue with four elements. Um, that being said the weight's in thousands of pounds so we will, will want to rectify that here. Four thousand and 5,000. And now we have a completed graph. I hope that this was able to help you learn how to use ggplot2. You should try to create other kinds of graphs using the cheat sheet like we did today. It's a great resource, so if there's anything that you take away from this video, please use the cheat sheet. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and I can try and help out. I plan to make some more videos, so let me know if there's any specific graphs that you want me to go over or any aspects of ggplot that you want me to cover. And lastly, but not least, thanks for watching and leave a like and subscribe if you think that I earned it.